you so much. I'm so happy that you are listening, watching. And of course, I want you to subscribe. Why wouldn't you? Because we have amazing guests, great content, and fantastic jokes. I say dripping with sarcasm. So here's the deal. Uh, what do you call a cow in an elevator? Raising the stakes. <laughs> <laughs> All the camera operators behind are like, yeah, because <laughs> they were like coaching me ahead of time, you know, like this is how you do it, Sarah. So anyways, here I have a great, great guest. I'm excited to introduce you, Lori Rolefeld. Did I say that right? You did. Nice. Nice to meet we you. We were talking, It's I think it's Dutch, right? Rolefeld. It is Dutch. My husband's family, is, He's my husband is first um, generation American. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Does he speak Dutch? Uh, he does speak some Dutch, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So... Like, this is my first time to, like, meet you and everything. So, and not everybody knows, like, who you are. Where are you from and what, what what's kind of some of the cool things that you do? Oh, I am from Rhode Island, and it is the smallest state. And we have, we were, um, Rhode Island was actually declared an unreached people group by the Southern Baptists about uh, 12 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> that tells you something about Rhode wow. Island. So for 12 years, they've been sending missionaries to my state. Huh. And um, and so that's where I live and breathe. I tried to I tried to get out of Rhode Island as you know as a, you know you're young and yeah. you're in a small town, small state. And I thought it would be no problem because Jesus needed missionaries, and of course I'll be able to go somewhere. But I was I, I was really bad at summer missions, and uh, the Lord had something else for me. So I I am in Rhode Island still, and but my words travel. So I'm a I'm a writer and a speaker. For years I've also had a day job working with families in crisis. Uh, um, I don't I haven't done that for the last two years, but yeah. now I write, speak, coach. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. And summer missions, where'd you where'd you try to pop in? I was in Japan for a summer. Ooh. Yep. And and I I liked it. It yeah. was you know it was it was wonderful. But I you know they were like, you know you're probably called to something else. <laughs> so That's funny. On the long plane ride back, I was like, all right, Lord, whatever you want for me. I didn't imagine it would be forever in Rhode Island. But mm -hmm. that's that. I I married a man who loves Rhode Island, and my children live near me. And mm -hmm. so, but then when they declared the state and Irish people group. The Lord said, welcome to the mission field. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, here you so are. So why is it? Why do they say that? Um, it would be fewer than 1% of uh, the population of Rhode Island attend an evangelical church. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Providence is always the least literate, uh, biblically literate city in the country. Whoa. That's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. I never, like, never hit, dawned on me. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. One of the things you say to describe yourself is you are a hobbit dispenser. A disturber. A disturber. disturber of hobbits. Hobbit disturber. Yeah. So I read that and obviously you like that sticks. I'm like, I wonder what that means. So help me with that. What does that mean? Yeah. I really relate to hobbits and I think that they are a good representation of the American church. Of course, they are for those who don't know what a hobbit is. <laughs> they are from um, Lord of the Rings and, um, and they love to be in the Shire. They love to be home. They love their comforts. They like their meals on time. And they're wary of adventures because adventures make you late for dinner. And um, I've, I'm very much like that. I'm very much a product of living in America. And, um, but the Lord's called me into adventures. And I'm always the bold prayer take me along and then I'm the one screaming like no what oh, I no, stopped I didn't doing know that be I like that way. I'm yes. like no 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 then he'll answer yes yes but now I want to <laughs> disturb other Christians because hobbits when they go on adventures they realize oh this is amazing so that's um you know I like to be a little challenging about um, you know, how settled we can become and how comfortable we can become. I work with a lot of um, older writers. I coach mostly older writers because I, I truly believe that some stories take a lifetime to tell. And so I do a lot of talking about like seek discomfort. That's how we grow. And, and even, you know, and I have to take that medicine all the time because I, I boldly say seek discomfort and then when discomfort comes I'm on my knees going ah, make it go away mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is really a, you know strong yeah medicine but you know I, I was announced on a radio once as being a as a distributor of hobbits please don't go to my website <laughs> expecting to get a hobbit I don't distribute or dispense hobbits <laughs> Well, I think I had the dispense on my mind because of Colorado and all of our dispensaries. <laughs> I did have one lovely event coordinator say to me once, 
could you not disturb our ladies? <laughs> 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 like the Holy Spirit does what the Holy Spirit does. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't make promises. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. yeah That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So how did you get into like coaching writers? <sighs> well, I do believe that, you know, like I've, it, I really believe in perseverance. That's, you know, persevere through everything um, in what God's called you to do. And for writers, that can be look really tough. And for there are a lot of people who dreamed of writing, or dreamed of writing a story, dreamed of writing for some a group of people that are not represented. Um, but the things along the way, you know, things in ourselves and out external forces get in the way, and they get discouraged and they drop to the side of the narrow road. And so I like to find those gasping people on the side of the narrow road and say. You know, yeah, let's, you know, like maybe we need to reframe your thinking about what this was going to look like. Maybe we need to reset your, you know, ideas that writing was going to be glamorous and amazing. And it's more like farming. <laughs> it's more yeah. like, you know, it's a marathon. Yes. Yeah. And you do all these, you know, you invest all this time and effort and you pray about what crop to, you know, do. And then locusts come or the weather's bad or the president doesn't like green beans and nobody wants to buy your green bean crop or, you know, that's what writing can be like. But if we write for the Lord, we need to be, you know, determined to persevere mm -hmm. and then to and to be happy with a with the audience that we have. You know, I, I come from Rhode Island, very small. Our church has about 60 people on a good Sunday. Yeah. And my pastor is just an amazing quality preacher. He has a doctorate. He's an incredible man. And I never get the feeling that he's wishing there was, you know, like, oh, looking beyond us to a bigger congregation. You know, he'd like us to grow from people coming to the Lord, but he loves pouring into us. Mm -hmm. And so I think that a lot of writers may be called to smaller audiences, but that doesn't mean that that, that wasn't God's purpose for what they did, mm -hmm. what they do. So just, and I, and I, I can really appreciate, because I write, mm -hmm. and I like to write, mm -hmm. um, and it's not an easy task. Um, mm -hmm. But do you have some like just practical suggestions? Somebody who wants to be a writer, somebody like you said, they've tried, but then they kind of quit. They, you know, they're on the side and they're kind of gasping, you know. So like practical suggestions. Um, if they can't sit down with you and talk like this, mm -hmm. do you have like some just some key things to kind of ooh, let's get off high center, let's reframe your thinking? But are there some other things you would say? Yeah, I think. Um, you know, for one thing, to know your why, to know why, you know, like if, if writing is the skill that God's given you, if, uh, you know, all right, so I'm just going to be blunt. Like we dither a lot, right? As mm -hmm. writers, oh, I don't know. Should I write? Should I do this? I think God told me to. I'm not like some of many people have a message and we need to get that out. We need to not spend time dithering. Mm -hmm. I give God all of my skills. Mm -hmm no matter what they are. And so if I, you know, like some of us get a very specific call, write this book, start this ministry. Others of us, we write. And so we give it to the Lord and, and we say, I will write whatever you want me to write. So get over the dithering and get about working. Um, look at your strengths as a writer, because then you begin to see the field differently. Books are not everything. Books will reach a certain amount of people, but there are a lot of opportunities to write that will minister to people that maybe you're ignoring because you're so focused on one particular avenue. Just give that to the Lord. Um, and then one, people, one thing people worry about is, is um, wasting their time. You know, what if I put all my time and effort into this and I wasted my time? I was like, you don't think every missionary, every minister, everybody, we're not the only ones who wrestle with that. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the key is to not do it for God, but do it with God because, you know, He is the living Word. And so it's like, I get to work with my father in his shop. No one, if I, my dad was a carpenter, no one would ever think I was wasting my time working alongside him in the carpentry shop, building birdhouses. They wouldn't say, oh, you better make money off that or it's a waste mm -hmm. of time. Right. And it's the same with writers. I get to work with the Lord, with his message, with his words, with, if I do it with him, it's never a waste of time, no matter what, up, you know, outcomes are on the other side. Cause there's so much I can't control about that, that I just need to be faithful to do what he asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And this word, not everybody knows the definition. What does it mean to dither? 
together <laughs> to, you know, to go back and forth, to be double-minded, I guess. Okay. You know, stop being double-minded about, you know, what, you know, because a lot of people start and start, stop and start, stop and start with yep. their writing. Yep. And, um, and I think, no, just try to develop a steady habit of writing and being available for what God wants you to write and take the, the small things. I, I've written so many, so many of the things that I've written to sort of like, well, I have to do this along the way. I have to do this in order to get here. The Lord has shown me like, look what I can do with that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what's over there. Don't worry about that. Do what's in front of you. Do this and do it well. Do it as if it's the only thing you'll ever write. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. And, and I have this mantra, writers write. That's absolutely right. <laughs> if you don't write, then why, you, how, do you, how do you call yourself a writer? Yeah. And writing doesn't always have to be public. When I first started writing, I had an editor tell me, you know, some of what you write, Sarah, is, should be private. <laughs> but everybody doesn't need to know some of that. So, and the difference between public and private writing, personal writing and processing writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I tell people to writers to have a double devotional life. I think because yeah. like, sometimes you get in this habit of going to God with that quiet time, but you want to download for a new blog post or you want, you know, I got to be able to teach something. And so I, you know, like preserve a time between you and God that's not going to escape that time. That's just going to be that time. And then go, you can go back to the same passage later as a writer if you want, or, you know, but like, but guard right, that guard relationship, that relationship. Guard the intimacy. Yeah. And make that the platinum priority. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. that has to be. And it can't be to get something, to do, to accomplish, to produce. Right. It has to be the relationship first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you don't know, you know, look at Ananias and Acts. Like he, all we know about him is that he had that one moment of extreme obedience, you know, go to the murderer Saul. Sure. And, you know, but what else did he have to do? He, re you know, helped to release Paul. Yeah. Like that's powerful. I, you know, I, I wrote a blog post once. I was so frustrated about what was happening during, after the earthquake in Haiti. And I'm not a person of means. And I was like, Lord, I, you know, like all I have is words. That's why I got a blog. I can write a blog. Sure. That seems like so nothing. But I wrote a blog post called the parable of the American church in Haiti. And I wrote it and sent it out there. It's 2010. And, um, you know, people read it. That was great. But in 2012, someone said, um, Ann Voskamp's writing about you. I was like, well, that's a mean trick to say to me. Like, right. she is not. Right. She wasn't using my name, but I went to her blog and she was talking about, she and her husband were praying about doing ministry in Haiti and what could they give to Haiti. And she said, someone gave me this blog post by some woman in Rhode Island and she, wow. and she linked to it and she talked about how the Lord had used it to convince them to do ministry in Haiti. And the Lord was like, Mic drop, Lori. Like, just do what I tell you to do. Just do it. You don't yeah. see what I might do mm -hmm. on this end. And mm -hmm. too many of us are waiting to get a guaranteed outcome or, mm -hmm. you know. The obedience precedes results. Yeah. And it's our job to obey. It's God's job to do the results. Yeah. I mean, we can do, try to help with the results, but at the end of the day, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you do what you you know, you mm -hmm. do the you do the things. You do mm -hmm. the things people tell you are mm -hmm. right yep. to do. Yeah. And uh what do you like to read? Oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> like I have yeah. one of those Kindles that like mm -hmm. if my husband saw it, you know, I couldn't accuse him of hoarding anymore. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I read a lot of nonfiction. I like to, you know, I like his, I like great big giant historical fiction, such and, as um, oh my goodness, like Rutherf Edward Rutherford. I don't know if you're you know he just does these hugely Ken Follett, those yep. kind of yep. you know big historical fiction books. I like yep. to immerse in those. Yep. You know, and and then I'm just always reading. I'm always reading a book on writing. Yeah. Always trying to improve there. Write yep. books on speaking. Books on books on the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what do you think are some good books to read on writing? Oh, uh, like I like I am old now, and so like right now I'm not going to be able to access the best sure, books on sure. writing. Like what what like books on writing that I'm reading right now are or that have stuck in your mind that have been helpful that you're like, ooh, that's a really good book on writing. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, like so really basic books, like, you know, like on writing Stephen King, he wrote. So here's what he's I'll, amazing. He is amazing. You may not like the content, but he's an incredible writer. Right. But so for I coach a lot of women writers. So I always tell them, you've all read Stephen King on writing. They're like, yes, yes. And he is amazing. I'm like, good. You've read that. But if you, as like most women, just a general, most women, like he says, if you're not writing 20 pages a day, you're not a yep. real writer. Okay. Like someone's doing his laundry and, right. and, and cooking his meals and doing, you know, like that's fine. But then I, I read a book when I was trying to get over that called Pen on Fire. And, um, it, you know, and it was about writing as a woman and, and being able to work writing into the margins of our life when we're first starting out and we've got a family and a day yeah. job and other stuff. I was like, read him, but also read Pen on Fire and learn how to integrate it into your life. Because just like I, some of my best friends are men. I love men and, I, and I'm a big fan of men. But like just like in medicine, we can't use male bodies right. as a template to treat ours. So we also can't use maybe their template for goal setting and stuff sure. and just lay it on our lives without modifying it. Totally good. Bird by bird? Bird by bird and the moth. Excellent. Classic. Excellent. Jerry Jenkins writing for the soul. Mm -hmm. So writing nice. for the soul, very, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And he's written a, a book with great integrity. He's turned me on to reading sports writers <laughs> because you can learn so much from, my, from, from reading sports writers. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I think to your point, disturber of hobbits, mm -hmm. right? So reading stuff that's not always like what you would prefer, your, your go-to, like sports writers. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, different. I had a friend of mine, I used to never read fiction. My friend said to me, what? What's wrong with you? Why <laughs> do you read fiction? I'm like, I don't know. So then I picked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a brave new world. Yes. <gasps> yeah. yeah. And so you get it and to disturb the hobbits, right? Yeah. And those big feet. Yeah. Yeah. I have one um, novella because there are just some things that you can't, that are better told, you know, yeah. in a complex story yep. and with and with people with flesh on yep. instead of just like, here, go do this. Yep. Show someone doing exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm excited to meet you, hang <laughs> out with too. you, talk with you. Hey, hey, here's a question for you to think about here as we finish. One, thanks for subscribing. Two, hit the notification bell right there. Keep you posted when we put up new content. And here's your question. Um, what... If you could write anything, what would you write? You're like, what does that mean? Well, could be a letter, could be poetry, could be a blog, could be captions. What would you write? Mm -hmm. Answer that here. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time.